friends in this video we are going to study the working of cathode ray oscilloscope also known as CRO so let us start with our topic <music> The cathode ray oscilloscope or CRO is one of the most common instrument present in any of the electronics laboratory. In the laboratories, it is used to display, measure and analyze the waveforms of different electronic signals like voltage, current, acceleration, strain, pressure, etc. So we can say that CRO is basically used to display the waveforms of these signals or it allows us to get a two-dimensional graph of these signals. Okay, so the signal, the input signal, it is going to be plotted on the x-axis and y-axis. Like on the x-axis we will have time and on y-axis we have the input signal so the input signal will be plotted with respect to either time or with respect to another signal so here we will study that how the CRO works now in the CRO the main part of CRO is the cathode ray tube which is known as the CRT CRT is also known as the heart of CRO because the display of the waveform it is done in the CRT. If we see the internal structure of the CRT it will consist of various parts like electron gun, deflection plates, then phosphor screen and a glass envelope. The electron gun is the part which produces the electrons, a beam of electrons. This beam of electrons then passes through the deflection plates and the electron beam will be deflected according to the input signal. And then this electron beam strikes the screen and the luminous spot is produced on the screen. And this luminous spot, it moves over the screen with respect or in proportion to the wave variations in the input voltage so if we see the internal structure it will be like this is the cathode ray tube in which we are having the electron gun the deflection plates vertical and horizontal deflection plates which are causing the movement of the electron beam in the vertical direction and the horizontal direction after passing through these two plates the electron beam it is going to strike the phosphor screen and due to this striking luminescence is produced a spot is produced and this spot is going to move in the in proportion to the signal which is applied to the CRO okay so this is just how the CRO works now how the waveform is obtained on the screen of the CRO let's see So if we talk about, if we are talking about the working, so the working was like first the CRO, it is connected with the power supply. When it is connected to power supply, then the electron gun, here in the electron gun, we are having the heater. So this pins, they are connected to the power supply. So heater will be heated up. This heater is going to heat the cathode. Cathode is going to release the electrons. These electrons passes through the control grid. The control grid, it controls the number of electrons which are passing through it okay so after that it passes through the pre-accelerating and accelerating anodes which are going to accelerate the electrons after that this passes through the focusing anode which is going to focus the beam of electrons after that when the beam of electron comes out of this electron gun it will be a sharply focused accelerated beam of electrons then this beam of electrons passes through vertical and the horizontal deflection plates and then it strikes over the phosphor screen now how the waveform is observed what we were studying 
is the observation of waveform on the CRO. Now the input signal which we want to observe or whose waveform which we want to obtain it is applied to the uh, Y plates okay that is the vertical deflection plates. Now, uh, in the CRO, we are having the two inputs, the vertical input and the horizontal input. So, vertical input will be the input signal which we want to uh, measure or whose waveform we want to display on the screen. So, if we see in the um, cathode ray tube, we are having the vertical deflection plates. So, here we will get the vertical input and horizontal deflection plates, we will get the horizontal input. Okay. Vertical deflection plate will cause the movement in up and down direction. Okay. That is in the Y direction. And horizontal deflection plates, they are causing the movement in the left to right direction. That is in the X direction. So here we will apply a sweep voltage or we can say a sawtooth voltage which is also known as the time base. Time base uh, means it is an internally generated ramp voltage when we want to uh, get the waveform of the signal with respect to time. Okay. So sawtooth voltage it is known as the time base which is an internally generated ramp voltage. And on the Y plates, we are providing the input signal which is under test. Now when simultaneously both the ramp voltage and the input voltage they are applied then two forces will be acting on the electron beam one in the horizontal direction and other in the vertical direction. So what are these two forces? First force is in the horizontal direction moving the electron beam from left to right. Another is in the vertical direction moving the electron beam in the up and down direction. So because of the influence of these two forces, the electron beam, it is going to be deflected. Now this deflection of the electron beam, it is proportional to the vertical input of the CRO. Vertical input means the input signal which we have applied. So the deflection is proportional to the voltage applied to the plates. So horizontal deflection will be proportional to the uh, X plates means the voltage applied to the X plates and vertical deflection will be proportional to the signal applied to the Y plates. So you can see that to the Y plates to the Y plates we have connected the input signal which we want to measure. So deflection in the y direction that is the vertical direction will be proportional to this and 
to the x plates we have applied the ramp voltage ramp signal so the deflection in the horizontal direction will be proportional to the ramp signal now if we consider here an example where we have applied the input signal as a sinusoidal signal and the x plates we have applied a ramp signal and the frequencies of these two signals is different from each other so let's see that how the waveform will be generated on the screen of the cro you can see here in the a graph we are showing the input which is applied to the vertical plates that is the y plates and here we are showing the input which is applied to the horizontal plates that is the x plates simultaneously we have applied these two signals okay now when these two signals are applied the electron beam will be deflected in both the horizontal and the vertical direction so you can see here that first deflection is from 0 to a okay so according to this uh, signal which is on the vertical plates the electron beam will be deflected in the vertical direction now in the horizontal direction you can see that we are having the ramp voltage so this ramp voltage it is going to produce a straight line here okay so waveform will be from 0 to a in the horizontal direction and from 0 to this a in the uh, in the horizontal and this is in the vertical direction again from a to b here and from here a to b so a to b will be in the vertical direction movement and from this a to b in the horizontal direction again we are having b to c okay so b to c we will be having this and it is in the horizontal direction again it is going to move from c to d here also from c to d both in horizontal and vertical direction so on the display screen of the cro we will get a waveform and a straight line and this waveform it is according to the you can see here the frequency is changed of the output waveform and the input waveform because the waveform the frequency of this ramp voltage is also different okay so in this way the waveform is generated on the display screen of the CRO. Now in the diagram you can see that we are using an ideal sawtooth wave means that this wave is having the uh, no flap flyback time. No flyback time means the time taken from the signal to drop from its maximum value to minimum value it is ideally zero. So again it is abruptly here I have written that at the end of the sweep cycle the sweep voltage is abruptly drops down and the spot is immediately transferred to its original position. So here you can see that suddenly it is dropping from its maximum value to minimum value. So here the spot it will come to its initial position again the cycle will be repeated this will be the input signal and here we will have a another sweep cycle so same signal will be repeated here so in this way we are getting the complete voltage waveform on the screen okay now if we talk about the frequency we can say that the frequency of the input signal it is twice the frequency of the sawtooth sweep so if we want to observe one cycle we have to uh, the sweep signal should also have frequency matched with the input signal so in this way the waveform is observed on the screen of the cro and that is the how the cro 
works and displays the waveforms of different electronic signals. So I hope this uh, that this topic working of cathode ray oscilloscope is now clear to you. Thank you.